In this video, we take some ordinary kitchen appliances and brew a small batch of beer with it. And that's coming up next. How's it going? My name's Brian. I'd like to welcome you to another video. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more about small batch systems like this, electric brewing, and all sorts of other home brewing related stuff, consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to click the bell so you don't miss anything. The folks at New Air reached out to me about reviewing some of their products and I looked at some of this stuff and it really didn't fit what I do on this channel but they do have a sister company called Avalon Bay and I looked at a catalog of products that they had and they really had some stuff that looked really cool. You guys have asked me about doing induction cooking or induction plate systems and they had one of those and they also had another device that I think would be really awesome for doing small batches and so I told them, hey, I'll take one of those, one of those and they sent them to me. So let's take a look at the system that I put together with all of these components. So one of the first things that I've got is the induction plate, and that is the IC100B, and that is a 1800 watt induction cook plate, and it has multiple functions on it, which is, is really nice because you can control both temperature and also the wattage. So you can kind of dial in whatever you want to do. Um, it does go from uh, like three or 400 watts all the way up to 1800 watts, and you know fully adjustable, it has a timer on it, so if you want to time your mashes or whatever, you can do that. Now, to maintain the mash temperature in the batch, they actually sent me the SVS100, which is their sous vide stick. And if you're not familiar with sous vide cooking, um, it is a method where you actually put your, your meat, vegetables, whatever, into a bag, seal it up, and then you cook it in a hot water bath for a certain period of time based on what the protein is or whatever the vegetables are. And I thought it would be a great device to maintain a mash temperature in a small system like this so that we don't have to employ a pump and a PID and all that stuff. Now, the nice thing about this is it is fully programmable from, I think, about 30 minutes all the way up to 72 hours. And it will go from 104 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 190. And so those of you that do sour beers, I don't do them personally myself, but this device may be a great small batch sour beer because you can hold it in that low temperature range. The other thing that is a plus about this device is that it has uh, all stainless steel construction down below. Anything that touches the ward is gonna be stainless steel, but it has a feature that a lot of them don't, and that is a removable screen or base on the bottom. And that will allow you to clean everything, make sure it's all clean, um, and you can see everything is stainless steel. It has a small impeller in the bottom to help circulate with. And there is a collar that you can clamp on either to the side of the kettle or onto another device that I, am, that I put together in the system. Now, one of the things you do need with an induction cooktop is you're going to need an induction ready pot. And I did a lot of searching Amazon, all the, other, all the online manufacturers, and I kept coming across the Anvil products. And they actually make a kettle that is absolutely perfect for this system. It is a five and a half gallon, triclad bottom, solid, heavy duty kettle. It has heavy duty handles. It has a built-in uh, thermometer. It comes with a ball valve with a dip tube that goes to like three eighths from the bottom. It is a solid, heavy duty kettle. I think you could probably hold up a truck with this. And that's, that's kind of what I said when I first saw it. So this thing is absolutely awesome. It has some gradation marks inside so that you can see what the level of your, your liquid or your wart is on the inside. So you don't need a sight glass on it. So it's very nice for that. Now, one of the other things that I had an issue with was uh, the manufacturer of the sous vide stick says that you're not supposed to touch food with the device. And I think a lot of that it has to do with, you know, they don't want somebody sticking it in spaghetti sauce or something like that. So uh, based on what I see of the device, it's all stainless steel. I don't see any harm in touching the wart, but I didn't want grain to get stuck inside of it. So what I did was I searched Amazon and actually found a hop screen that normally goes into a kettle. And the beauty of this is that it actually goes, that sous vide stick will fit right inside of it and basically hold the sous vide stick up off the bottom of the kettle as well as keep all of the grain out of the impeller and the heating element, all that stuff. So really cool thing. And I'll list all of these products down below, as well as have a coupon code down there for a discount on both of these items, both the sous vide stick as well as the induction plate. So that's that. I will be using a just a standard bag for the mash. And then I picked up at one of my local grocery stores, I picked up just a small colander, stainless steel colander, 
to use for draining the mash. And then yes, oh yes, uh, an immersion chiller. Now this is pretty simple to make. I use soft copper on it and I just bent it around a CO2 tank and it basically was a perfect size for this type of system. Wasn't that expensive. I think it was about 20 or $25 for, I think it was 30 feet of copper. And that's certainly a perfect size for this type of system. So I want to get everything together and I'm gonna list the recipe and all that stuff down below. I did some water adjustments on it, so I'll have all the details. I'm using distilled water, trying to come up with a profile straight up from, from scratch. So I'll put all the details on that. So be sure and check the description out below for that. And let's get going. All right, so I've got my water in. The recipe that I used for Beer Smith, it called for four and a half gallons of water. It's gonna be a tight fit with the seven and a half pounds of grain or almost eight pounds of grain that I've got. Um, so all I need to do to start up the induction cooktop is hit the on button and I will go to the function over here. Now let me move this pot a little bit farther forward. Hit the function, and then I'm gonna turn it up to 1800, which is the wattage on it, and I'll start heating it, and I will let you know that the water temperature, I had it in the basement here, the water temperature is like right at 64 degrees. So we'll see how quickly it takes it to get up to the mashin temperature of 155 degrees. So we'll we'll see how long it takes for that. I'll start a timer and let you guys know so you know what to expect with this with four and a half gallons of water. See you in a few minutes. All right, I am back. And one of the things I was gonna share with you was how long it took to get to 154 degrees or 155 degrees. I messed up and put the induction plate onto this uh, blanket that I have here. And what it was doing, it was blocking the vent because this thing has a fan inside of it to keep the unit cool. And so I came down and I was upstairs and I came down the basement and it wasn't heating up as fast as I remembered it did before. And then I stood here for a minute and I heard a pulsing noise. It was like bzzz and then bzzz. And so what I figured out was happening, it wasn't allowing enough airflow through the unit to allow it to stay on constantly. So I'm gonna go through the brew day and do everything and then I'll go back and fill this thing up with four and a half gallons of water and I'll let you know how long it actually took and I'll kind of insert that along the bottom here and let you know what the actual time was because it was like over, it was getting close to an hour and I knew it didn't take that long before. So I've turned the induction plate down to 300 watts and we are right uh, about 155 or so. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to put in the bag and incidentally, I am doing a no sparge method on this one. So I will not be doing a sparge at all. The only thing about this kettle that might be somewhat problematic is that the temperature probe for the thermometer does stick quite a ways into there. I didn't have too much trouble the last time. When I say a test, I, I put some old grains in there that I had laying around. Um, I didn't actually brew a beer, but I wanted to see how the immersion circulator and everything works. So I wound up just doing that and it did work pretty well from what I remembered. Uh, so I'm gonna try this again. All right, that looks better. This thing is almost too high, but I'm tall enough to get it done. The one thing about the immersion circulator, the sous vide circulator, that is a 800 watt unit. Uh, it is all stainless steel. It has a coil in it. It has like a impeller paddle in the bottom. I don't know if you're familiar with them or not, but uh, there was an article on the uh, AHA website not too long ago about using them for doing brewing a bag stuff. But it is, uh, they do say not to submerse it in food, which, I, you know, this is not really food. I mean, it is beer, but I think they probably put that out more for people that try to put it in like tomato sauce or something goofy like that. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, we are getting pretty full here, but it seems like we're doing okay. So, all right, almost got all the grain in there. It is really close. Let me go ahead and dump the rest of it in there. And that is one full kettle for sure. Let me go ahead and get this stirred in. And this is uh, really thin. It's a typical no sparge. Uh, brew in a bag mash so there's a lot more water than normal um, I didn't do the calculations on how many quarts per pound or whatever but it is really thin but the ideal behind it is pull the bag out no sparging squeeze the bag move right to the boil I found a hop screen that goes into kegs 
And this actually works really well. I just drop it right down into the center and it's about uh, 300 microns from what I remember, if that's if I remember correctly. And I'm just gonna, this thing has a collar that comes on it. And so I put the collar on there just to hold it up. And the maximum line is actually right here on it. And so when I put it down in there, we are just below that maximum line. And one of the things that I did in the previous test was actually took my spoon and put the spoon up underneath it here, and that will hold it in place like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. And when I plug it in, let me get this thing on here. There's a clamp on the back of here, and I can tighten that down on the spoon to hold it in place, just to hold it for now until I get everything set up. So I will go ahead and turn it on and hold down the button to turn it on. And I'm going to go ahead and set it up to our mash temperature is 148. So I'm going to go ahead and bump the temperature up to 148. Just hit the plus key until I get to 148. And then for the time, the way this thing works is pretty cool. Actually, uh, you can put the time in here. And so if I want to mash for 60 minutes, I can just put it at 60 minutes and it won't start the timer until it reaches the 148 degrees. And then once it reaches that, it will actually start a timer. And then once the timer is over, it'll actually beep at you and let you know that everything is completed. So we are good there. I'm going to go ahead and let it go and hit the start button and it will start heating up. And it looks like we're sitting at 148. So we did pretty good on hitting our target temperature with our grains and everything. And I'm gonna give this a little stir. And I'll probably do that throughout the, throughout the mash period for a little bit. Over here on our thermometer, it's saying uh, 148. So last time when I used it, it seemed to work pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it go and we will be back. I'll put some updates here and there along the way and let you know what's going on with it. So, but looking good so far. See you in a few. I wanted to show you real quick, some people might be wondering about whether how it circulates or not, but you can definitely see quite a bit of circulation there from the immersion sous vide stick. Looking good. All right, so we've got about 20 minutes left and it has been doing pretty good. It's fluctuated by about a degree or so. It's right at 146 right now. It's bounced around between 146 and 148. Not bad. So everything's going pretty good so far. See it mash up. All right, so we've reached the end of the mash. I went ahead and unplugged the sous vide stick and I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out of there and set it over into the sink. And one of the nice things about this is that the, the collar piece comes off. So you would be able to clean all of the inside inner workings out of it. So I'm gonna do that after I get done with everything. Let me set that in there. Go ahead and pull this out. Set it off to the side here and then we'll pull this up out of here. You can see that's pretty clear, pretty clean. Got a little bit of uh, sediment in the bottom of it, but nothing too major. So that looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and pull this up out of here. I'll try this again. This actually fits in there really well. Get this bag all squeezed out here. That looks pretty good. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and crank this thing on, put the lid on, and uh, we will get going on this thing. Crank it up to 1800 and uh, get it heating up. So be back whenever we get to a boil. I'm gonna start a timer so I can let you know how long it takes to get from a boil, from the mash out to a boil, and I'll be back shortly. All right, so we've just come to a boil about 32 minutes or so, if you can see on that there. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the lid off of here, and uh, we are boiling. And it is looking mighty good. 
Definitely got a nice vigorous boil. We'll see how it does with the top off of there, but uh, definitely looks good. So, one of the other things too I was going to say is that this device here that I used for the sous vide stick, it can actually double as a hop sack or a hop spider. So I'm going to go ahead and dump my hops in there and uh, get that going. So it will work. It doubles as that and then whenever you go to keg this, if you want to hop in the keg, you can uh, go ahead and use that in the keg as well because that's really what it's used for. So, all right. Oh man, that smells great. That smells great. For sure. So yeah, it's uh, calmed down on the boil just a little bit here. Um, still has a pretty good boil. It might do a little bit of uh, cover the kettle just a little bit with the lid just to keep a good rolling boil going. But uh, we'll see what happens there. Not too bad without it, but I think it could probably use a little bit of help. So I'm actually going to cover it about halfway. I will be back in... 45 minutes. The immersion chiller that I had spoke of in the last video on the small batch, I'm going to actually use that to chill this one down. So 45 minutes, we'll go ahead and stick the immersion chiller in and then we'll get ready to chill it down at one hour and then I'll, I think I'm going to hold off on dumping the hops in until like it drops down to 180 degrees. So we'll be back here in just a little bit, but looking good so far. Got a nice boil going. So looking good. A little bit of lid on there, it's got a good boil going on now, so I am definitely happy with that. It looks good. We are at the end of the boil, and I am ready to stick in the immersion chiller. Yes, Larry, <laughs> this is for you, buddy. So I don't know if it's going to come back to a boil or not, but not a huge ordeal. We're right at the end of the boil anyway, so it is still giving a little bit of a boil there, so should be okay. And I've cleared off the space behind me on the table. I'll bring the kettle back there, hook it up to the water. I've got about 51, 52 degree water right now, so it shouldn't take too long to chill it back down. And once I get done with that, I will be back with my final thoughts. Um, I am going to be doing the fermentation on this in a five gallon carboy, which is kind of nice if you have five gallon carboys for secondaries or whatever that you used before, you can reuse those as a primary for these small batches. So way to reuse equipment that you already have, which I like doing. So I will see you in a few. All right, so the brew day is over, and I want to kind of share with you what my thoughts were. I think that the induction plate did a really good job for what it is and what the cost of it is. Uh, it did take a little bit of time to heat up the water for the mash in, about 30, 35 minutes on that. And then also the boil time was about 35 minutes or so, which is not too bad really for that much volume and the type of system that we've got here you know the biggest thing that is is really a plus in my opinion is there's no there's no assembly you don't need any tools you don't need any anything to put this together you can buy this kettle buy these couple devices and a couple other things and you've got a small batch brewing system all in all i think it worked really well one of the things i do recommend with the sous vide stick is uh, stirring it every once in a while because there was a little bit of fluctuation in the temperatures, you know, as it was going along, um, not more than two degrees, which is plenty acceptable in my opinion, but it did fluctuate a little bit. But once I stirred it up, it certainly came right back. Um, you saw the footage of how everything was circulating. So I think it did a really great job of that. Leave a comment down below if you are looking at doing a small batch system or if you have an induction plate or, you know, let me know what you're doing because I'm really enjoying exploring this, this small batch systems. And I've been learning a lot from you. I mean, I'm not a brew in a bag guy, but I've been exploring that and it's been, it's been a lot of fun. So, you know, I enjoy putting these systems together and showing you. As always, we appreciate the support. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to, share it with your friends, share it with somebody that's interested in maybe doing some brewing, getting into all grain, but they don't want to go full, full scale, you know, batches on it. I think this system is definitely a great entry level to brew enough beer that you're going to have some for a while. It's a little bit larger than the one gallon batch that I did previously but it's not a full five gallon batch with all that equipment and extra stuff to do. So again, we appreciate it. This has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. We'll see you on the next video.